Paolo Cassano from Mass General Hospital and working in the division of, of uh, uh, neuropsychiatry at Mass General. So I'm going to start uh, with a question. How many of you have experienced situations of having asked a question after already two people have answered that question? And I don't see any hands up, so I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. 50% of what I was going to tell you has been said already by Dr. Almeida, so wish me luck. So I want to say that uh, it's a very special and uh, uh, it's an honor to be here today. And uh, uh, it has particular meaning for me because uh, I am meeting with uh, the community of uh, scientists that are working in bipolar disorder. And uh, uh, my father is an expert in bipolar disorder as well. And so like my father, I became a psychiatrist. Like my father, I have profound ties with uh, uh, colleagues in the United States. And now I'm stepping into his field. So I want to tell you a little bit about my self-talk coming here. And I thought, okay, am I still at that developmental stage? Uh, and uh, I don't have an answer. <coughs> But there's also another reason why I'm bringing this up. Uh, and as I was planning at um, basically applying for this grant, it just brought me back to about 20 years ago when I was still in Italy. And uh, I was very well aware of uh, the work done there and uh, um, how devices could be profound in treating both depressive and manic symptoms alike. So as a group, we thought, can we actually leverage devices these days, uh, modern devices uh, for neuromodulation and have similar effects? Uh, however, have those effects uh, at home, self-administered in an easier way? So that's why we um, set off for, uh, or set out for this study. Now, this is a picture of our team. Um, our team is the NGH Brain Photobiomodulation Team, and we were out for a walk here in Boston, and you can see these kind of shiny brains are a symbol, because what we want to do is uh, stimulate uh, the brain with light. And so it was natural that we thought about using light, and that's what we do every day. So, we're all set, we got our funding, um, we started with this study. Uh, I didn't tell you that uh, uh, my uh, title page would come later on, so here it is, if you were wondering. So the title of our study is Transcranial Photobiomodulation with Near Infrared Light for Impulsivity and, and Hypomania. We were wondering, and we're particularly <coughs> concerned with impulsivity because uh, that impulsivity and that issue with decision making is critical to behavioral dysregulation and bipolar disorder and many unfortunate outcomes. So we were ready. Uh, and so I went to knock uh, Andy Nierenberg's door and say, hey, Andy, by the way, is, you know him, uh, is the director of the bipolar group uh, in, in Mass General, and say, hey, Andy, how are we going to recruit for this? And he's fairly diplomatic, and it's like, well, Paolo. And to make this story short, um, we uh, had to kind of rethink a little bit our study. We had a difficult time recruiting, so we changed the title, we changed the inclusion criteria to include a spectrum from eutonomia to isolated uh, manic symptoms up to hypomania. But we kept the core. So looking at uh, impulsivity and the correlation with manic symptoms. So um, Dr. Almeida has already uh, discussed this, but I just want to point it out again, that infrared light targets uh, a mitochondria and improves the energy metabolism in the cell. And actually, so we didn't choose photobiomodulation just because that's what we did. It was also very much fitting with the biology of bipolar disorder and uh, that affected uh, uh, metabolism in uh, um, bipolar disorder with, uh, if you take only one aspect from this uh, slide, low ATP and low energy metabolism. 
So what we had done as a prior work, we had looked at unipolar depression and we, have, we had looked specifically at a series of doses that we had tested for the ability to engage uh, brain metabolism as assessed by cerebrovascular changes. So here measured with a bolt. So basically we scanned subjects and we gave the treatment during the scan. So the sham make no difference whatsoever if you look at baseline versus after stimulation in terms of changes of signal. And that was comforting to us. Uh, to our dismay, the highest dose didn't make any difference whatsoever as well. The low dose, uh, even worse, uh, actually decreases cerebral blood flow, while the medium dose uh, increased cerebral blood flow. So that was uh, a very good step forward because now we had a potential target, cerebral blood flow, and a dose uh, to engage that uh, biomarker. So that's why uh, we chose photobiomodulation now to engage uh, the right dorsolateral prefrontal cortex and uh, as a node of the central executive network and uh, as a way to boost uh, that decision making that is altered in uh, a bipolar disorder. Interestingly, um, Dr. Almeida and Dr. Phillips, both here in the audience, have also been funded by the Milken, have been targeting the same targets, and are also, this Dr. Phillips, very much um, targeting these hypomanic symptoms. So in a nutshell, our first aim was to increase cerebral blood flow. We, our structure is to have treatment, five treatment in consecutive days, give treatment uh, uh, and MRI on uh, uh, day one and on day five. On day one, subjects receive both sham and treatment. We look at our biomarker, we compare the two, and we see if we got target engagement. So we want to replicate what we saw in uh, depression, although with uh, a different goal. Our second aim is to decrease impulsivity. So now we have uh, Still our series of treatment uh, on consecutive five days, we have two tasks to measure impulsivity, the IO gambling task and the Delgado, uh, both at baseline, then day one to look at immediate impact, day five to look at cumulative effects of five sessions, and week two to hopefully see a sustained effect. So with that, um, we are, hoping to bring this preliminary data to other mechanisms to extend and validate target engagement both in terms of the biomarker and in terms of the cognitive effect. I want to conclude to say that, uh, and this is a slide again from my father's work, uh, that I think we are hopeful that this can translate to, to populations uh, during their full-blown, full-fledged episodes of either mania or, or Nixon mania. Here, um, what uh, my father's group had demonstrated here, looking at the lifetime distribution of symptoms, depression in blue and red uh, mania, is that some patients had few symptoms in their lifetime, some patients had many symptoms, and this is regardless of severity. What we know is that uh, Patients experience, uh, even in their own lifetime, uh, full-fledged episodes and uh, um, <coughs> uh, sub-threshold sub conditions. And uh, we're hopeful that what we test here in sub-threshold uh, will be then later on tested uh, in full blown. So stay tuned, uh, more to come. And uh, uh, with that, uh, I want to thank you for listening today and uh, our team. If you're interested in uh, listening and hearing more, follow us uh, in, the, in the media. Thank you.